welcome to episode 3 of the Solid Blues and Knits podcast. My name is Elizabeth and I'm coming to you from the beautiful city of Bergen in the western part of Norway and this is where I live with my wonderful boyfriend and I'm currently working on my degree in corporal and organisational psychology. So unfortunately the past week has been a lot of studying and preparing for my huge exam that I had yesterday um, and not so much knitting and I really wanted to have a finished object for this week but unfortunately I don't. But I will start off with showing you where I'm at with my Christiana's Wave sweater that we talked about last week. So I have gotten a little bit of knitting in. Um, when I was supposed to read, you know, you, know, you do need to have a little break and have a little walk or make some food or something. So I just used every single second that I had to, um, to do that <laughs> and uh, every, every um, option that I had to pull out my knitting, I um, absolutely did. Nothing unusual about that, I suppose. Um, that's the way I usually do it, but this week has been particularly creative when it comes to finding time to knit. So um, I've been knitting while walking to the, the store and I've been knitting while cooking and um, yeah, just taking advantage of uh, every little bit of spare time that I had. So yes, back to the Christiana's Wave sweater. I finished the entire body of the sweater. I've done the, I'm just gonna show you. Here is the front piece. So that's this gorgeous, very simple lace panel going all the way down on both sides here. And it's just a seed stitch in the middle. And um, I've bound it off and um, I've got some live uh, stitches in the middle which is going to be for the neckline and um, I think it's going to be really, really lovely when it's finished. The back is just all seed stitch which, you know, looks great but it is a total bolt to knit if you ask me. <laughs> Uh, I love the look of seed stitch, I just don't have the patience for it. Um, but this uh, sweater is knit out of a rather plump yarn so that made it all a little bit easier and a little bit more enjoyable as well. And not only that, but I have finished an entire sleeve as well. So not so bad, right? If you didn't see last episode just um, feel free to go back and see where I was last week um, which wasn't very far and uh, so I'm, I'm quite pleased with that I'll say. Um, so the sleeves uh, are just constructed like well it's quite uh, it's quite oversized <laughs> um, it's a garter stitch almost all the way around it but then there's the same lace panel that's in the front uh, is also on the top of the sleeve right here and um, it's just a, um, a simple knit one purl one edge right here and <sighs> I thought that when I was finished with the body I had this idea that I was just the, the uh, arms left. I can I can knit that in what a day, two days, no problem. It's got really plump yarn. It's got big needles, no problem, right? But I keep forgetting how much I hate knitting sleeves. <laughs> I really don't like it. Um, I think it's quite boring and it takes forever, and it's just not a very sort of instant satisfaction knit that you sometimes get with um, with knitting the, the body of the sweater or something like that. I just feel like the arms are the most boring part of knitting pretty much any garment. Um, but I'd say that the most 
the thing that um, uh, held me back the most was that this sort of leaf is so oversized, it's got an enormous amount of stitches on it. <laughs> And um, I'm just going to demonstrate here a little bit for you. So uh, we've got the sleeve and as you can see that it's just so much fabric, so much extra fabric there. I don't know how well you can see it but it's just gigantic and uh, yes, it just took forever to knit. And, um, when I was finished with it, I basically prioritised a little bit differently and thought that if I just put it down for a little bit, then I could uh, regain some, some, um, what should I call it? Regain some, some excitement, I guess, about knitting the other sleeve. Um, it has not arrived yet, that uh, excitement, but... <laughs> Hopefully it will, if not I will make the sleeve and uh, hopefully have it finished for next week. Mm, I won't talk too much about the details uh, on this sweater because I did quite a big seg segment on it um, in the last episode but just a quick walkthrough. Uh, this is a pattern called the Christiana's Wave Sweater. It is available both in English and Norwegian on Ravelry. It is knit out of drops air and uh, uh, the needles I'm using is a prim 7mm needle um, that is in no way my needle of choice but it was the only one that I could get in the right size. Um, the pattern actually calls for a 9, I think 9, 8, 9, 10mm <laughs> probably um, needle but it being so gigantically gigantically oversized I just felt like it would probably be something that I would wear a little bit more if I just took it in a little bit and um, also it's very airy and the the um, lace panels are very open and with this sweater it's it feels like it's going to be really really warm so I didn't necessarily think that I would want to wear something underneath it so I just thought that if I used a smaller needle, I could maybe make the lace a little bit more compact uh, without sort of losing the um, the look the look of it. And uh, I think that turned out really well. It's still quite big actually, but uh, it's more of a uh, uh, comfortable, oversized, loungy sweater, and I think it's going to look really well. I love the colour. It's called. Uh, rose, it's the colour number 20 in the Drops Air yarn and um, yeah I really I really like it. Um, just need to get that second sleeve and the neckline and then it's, it's going to be finished. So just a little bit left, I'm almost there, almost at the finish line. Which makes for really good motivation <laughs> uh, any day of the week really. So I'm, tr I'm going to try to yeah, have it finished for next week. Um, yeah, I've said it so I'm, I'm totally committing to it now. <laughs> Although my Christiana Wave sweater got uh, a little bit uh, pushed on the sidelines this week, the real star I'd say of my knitting for the past week has been a test knit that I've been working on and I am so excited to share this with you guys. It is just the most amazing, amazing sweater and uh, um, I think you're just going to love it. So without any further ado, I'm just going to show you. This is the Pika Kyskenser. It's got a little split in the back and there's going to be a bow closing on there and the front has got this gorgeous lacy, lacy uh, panelling on it and it is just so cute and so gorgeous. The sleeves have also got this, the same pattern as the front 
uh, all the way down in the top of the sweater. I hope you can hope you can see that. And um, it's got some ribbing on the base of the sweater and on the end of the sleeves right here. And um, I'm so close to finished. I really thought that I would have this finished as well. But again, you know, exams and everything, so unfortunately I didn't, but I'm so close. I've got, I'm at the raglan decreases and um, I've done five, so I'm practically, well, almost halfway there. And um, there's uh, the bow in the back. I can't wait to knit that. I think that's going to be so much fun. And, uh, oh, I just, I want to show you one more time. Look at that. Isn't that just the most adorable pattern you've ever seen? I want this for myself so badly. I want to wear this sweater all the time. I love it. And fortunately, um, there will be a my size sweater. I'm pretty sure of it. So, yes, the pattern is Pikachu Skenser. It is by the wonderful and super talented and beautiful Anna Nix on Instagram and if you don't already you need to you need to go and and follow her she is so talented and she is just a wonderful person and a brilliant photographer she's got a really beautifully curated Instagram feed and um, also she's got this pattern coming out really soon so that is really exciting I'm so happy for her um, so yes if if you have a child if you're expecting a child if you know someone who's expecting a child or know any children you need to get this pattern and you need to knit them this sweater it is um, it's so beautiful I just I can't give it enough praise really and uh, uh, as soon as the my size version comes out, I would most definitely knit for one for myself. That is a fact. So the yarn for this sweater is the Drops Air, which is, which is incidentally the same one as I used for my Christiana's Wave sweater. Only this one is just held, uh, it's just one strand and uh, the other sweater is two strands. So hopefully that's not getting too washed out uh, and you can see the colour this is the colour number 15 and uh, I think it's called purple mist um, it is, oh, sorry dropped my phone <laughs> it is this um, really gorgeous pink and blue and purple uh, gradient or I don't I don't even know how to describe it but it's gorgeous and uh, the yarn is so super soft and the needles I'm using to knit this with are the Knit Pro Carbons oh let me just pull that up there, there we go the Knit Pro Carbons needles um, it is, uh, I, I have quite a few of these uh, needles and uh, before I uh, I uh, found the high high sharps. Uh, these were my absolute favourite needles. Uh, as like I said, they're the Knit Pro Carbons or Knitters Pride if you live in the US or Canada. And um, yes, I, I really love the needles. Uh, they are very lightweight. They're made out of uh, cull fibres and uh, brass and the, the cable is quite flexible, it's quite um, sturdy as well and the joints are, well they're not as smooth as the high highest but they are smooth I'd say. But I have had a bit of a problem with these needles um, in general and that is for some reason the tips, the brass tips tend to loosen and I've had that with quite a few of the needles actually, so um, I'm not, I don't know if that's a common thing. Have you ever experienced that with the higher high, no, sorry, not the higher highs, the Knit Pro Carbons. Um, has anyone ever had that problem? Um, 
they are quite pricey as well, so I mean they should really be of a of a high quality and um I don't like it when things things get ruined, especially not when they're a little bit pricey. So yes, um the uh Pikachu Skenser. Uh, I've got a little uh, stitch marker on there. Uh, it is by Jiggles and Beans, uh, which is one of my favourite favourite uh, Polly McClay artists and makers. She is. Um, they are made by Diane, who's Diane. Sorry, Diane. I think who's in the UK, and uh, she's got the Jiggles and Beans. FC shop definitely should definitely check it out. Um, so I know that last week I went on a bit of a tangent about uh, knitting patterns and and uh, Scandinavian knitting patterns in particular, with them not being very clearly written and not being very um, handhelding and a little bit vague and stuff like that and. Um, for instance, I've, I've uh, experienced one of my first patterns that I purchased from an um, individual designer on the, on the, uh, from a Norwegian from a Norwegian knitwear designer. Just simply said, uh, decrease uh, evenly on both sides until uh, you have some sort of a number of stitches left. And it did not say how to decrease, it did not tell you uh, pretty much any details about how to do that. And um, if you are an experienced knitter, you know how to decrease, you know how to do a uh, raglan decrease, you know how to make it different on either side so that you have that nice lining and you know that different sort of decreasing stitches or increasing stitches slope different directions. So if you simply knit two together then that's not going to look as pretty as if you slip one, knit one and uh, pull it over and on the other side if you knit two together and yeah, you know. So um, uh, that is a bit of a pet peeve of mine really, uh, unclear knitting patterns. But the point is that this is uh, a design and a pattern written by a, a Norwegian uh, knitwear designer and it is so well written. The pattern is so clear, the instructions are so clear and it is very easy to follow. It's such a joy to knit. I've, uh, one, of, one of the reasons that the Christiana's wave sweater has been lying around and that I never got going with the second sleeve was that this was so much fun to knit. It just flew by and I can't wait to make one for myself when the, the my size pattern is uh, available. And I'm not 100% sure when this pattern will be released but I promise I will tell you and let you know. And um, yes, keep your eyes out and go follow Anna Knits on Instagram. Now I know that I don't have a finished object since last week as we have already established but I do have a half finished object and that is a pair of socks or it's a sock, a finished socks, a half finished pair of socks. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, anyways it's I know I haven't been showing off a lot of socks previously on this podcast, but uh, I am quite a big sock knitter. I love knitting socks and um, uh, I love lacy patterns and cable patterns and uh, stuff like that. And um, yes, so anyways, this is the, without any further ado, this is the Mercury Socks by Kim Drota. It is readily available on Ravelry. If you don't already have this pattern, you really should go and get it because it is absolutely brilliant. It is very potato chippy. I'd say, oh, I really shouldn't say potato chippy because I don't really care too much about potato chips, but it's 
it's popcorn-y. <laughs> you just have to have one more, one more and one more. Just one more row all the time and it's very difficult to put them down and to stop knitting them. And I have knit quite a few pairs of the Mercury socks already and uh, it really is just such an enjoyable knit. Now this pair, this pair is not for me, um, it is for my grandmother who is just the most amazing person and the most amazing knitter. Uh, she is just a knitting goddess really. Uh, I just, she's just absolutely amazing. She's the most beautiful knitter I have ever seen anywhere at any time in my life. So she is most definitely uh, an extremely knit worthy person and um, uh, I really wanted to make her something and just send it in the mail and um, just surprise her. So um, I, uh, well she doesn't live where I live so I had to uh, have a little chat with my aunt and uh, speculate into what sort of uh, shoe size she wore and uh, <laughs> trying to figure out what size her feet were and I think we got there um, we'll see hopefully they'll fit and um, I have knit these out of drops a pack of yarn and uh, this is the main color it is the color 0302 and it's just this really uh, neutral tan camely colour and um, I thought that that would be something that she would like. It's very neutral and easy to wear. Um, yes, so the yarn is 100% alpaca. They're really warm. It's very, very soft and that is the main reason why I wanted them for the, the main part of the, the sock. Um, both the warmth of the alpaca. Alpaca is a super warm fibre and also it's quite lightweight and uh, quite uh, soft, at least this alpaca is super super soft. And as for the contrasting, um, I was initially thinking that I wanted something with a little bit of a reinforcement, some nylon or something in it for the heels and toes. But uh, I couldn't find something that I thought that was in a colour that she would like and I didn't have any at the time. Um, so I decided to go a completely different route and use the Drops Flora yarn which is a 65-35 Highland, um, Peruvian Highland wool alpaca blend and it just, it's a lot sturdier than the alpaca. It's quite soft but not as you know alpaca soft it's it's a lot sturdier and I think that's probably going to be all right um, because uh, my grandmother's house is completely carpeted and um, I don't think that she would wear these in shoes I think she would wear them more like house socks so yeah I think that's probably going to be all right and um, the main thing was that, well, the, the main focus was that they would be soft and uh, wearable and cosy and comfy, so hopefully she liked them. And I just need to get the other one done. <laughs> Gosh, I have a lot of knitting I need to do. I feel like I need to get done. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that's very good, isn't it? It's all, all good things. It's only enjoyable. Um, yes, so that's, that's those, the Mercury Socks, Kim Jota. If you like knitting socks, if you like lace, go get the pattern, they are wonderful. <laughs> Alright, so if you watched my first episode, you know that I've had a bit of a brioche conundrum, uh, because I started the Pearl Soho Genus Brioche Cowl, and it is my very first brioche project and I got really excited and 
found it to be super addictive and I kept going and um, problem was I had a lot of stitches on my needles and I somehow even though paying super close attention managed to twist it yes it's so silly I have it's just knock your head on the wall stupid really but um, if you haven't seen episode one I can show you real quick how it looks like this is the front and this is the back um, it is knit out of drops a packer I have uh, two strands of each color so I'm working it double and um, I'm using the high higher shops in the um, 3.5mm uh, which is the US 4 and basically uh, everyone who's uh, given me feedback on it has said that just keep going don't bother frogging it it's going to look great with the twist in it and uh, so that's what we're going to do I'm going to keep going, I'm calling it a design feature, it's going to look beautiful and um, yeah, I don't care, I don't care if there's a little mistake on it um, I'm not calling it a mistake, I'm calling it a design feature so there you go, it's going to be lovely <laughs> and with that I think we're going to move on to acquisitions so, I haven't uh, been uh, too crazy with the acquisitions last week but I have a couple of things to show you and the first one you have basically already seen because um, it's this gorgeous sock blocker from Woodico and um, you can see the logo up there hopefully and it is just so beautifully crafted um, I really love these. Um, I'm not sure where I saw them first, but I'm quite certain it was on someone's podcast. And uh, I just love them. They are very reasonably priced, um, quite affordable, I'd say. Uh, these are handmade wood blockers, so um, I mean, that's quite, quite, uh, quite brilliant. Anyways, uh, they are made out of birch wood and um, they've got several several layers of uh, waterproof varnish on them so that they are completely safe to use with your uh, socks when they are ready for blocking and uh, also they are so beautiful. Um, I decided on the butterfly one because I really love butterflies and um, yeah, but I had a hard time choosing because they have all these beautiful different shapes. They have a sheep and yeah, lots of lots of beautiful um, decorations on them. Uh, but I ended up with the butterfly, and I'm glad I did. So I got the small size, which is a size five to seven, which is a European thirty-five to thirty-seven, um, which is perfect for my feet. Uh, but uh, that's a quite a small size, so they pretty much only work for my feet. Um, well, I mean, for the people I'm, I'm knitting socks for, uh, they usually have a little bit larger feet than that. So these are my sock blockers from my socks, and <laughs> that is just brilliant. I have a uh, uh, more excuses to knit socks for myself so that I can put them on the gorgeous Wichka blockers <laughs> and I have used them and I am very very pleased with the result uh, I also have some um, Knitters Pride sock blockers I think some Knit Pro yeah I think they're Knit Pro sock blockers and uh, they are great they're the blue plastic ones but they don't look very pretty and these most definitely look pretty. So I really like that. Yes, so those are the uh, Widgeco sock blockers. And next on my 
a list of acquisitions are some stitch markers again. Um, I love stitch markers. I think they are just the most wonderful motivation to get to just one more row uh, and keep you going, keep you motivated and um, um, I love, as you know, I love my Jiggles and Beans stitch markers with the adorable little faces on them. They just make me so happy, like the little lolly uh, that was, um, or the little popsicle that was on the um, the uh, uh, Pikachu Skenser and yeah, it just makes me smile. But enough about that, I uh, got an order from uh, Seasons Arts and Crafts on Etsy and I got um, three different stitch markers and I got two of each. So first of all, we have a little hamburger. Can you see that? I might have to get up to show you. We got this little guy here. Hopefully you can see the, the detailing on this guy with the little seeds on top. We got some tomato and lettuce and um, it's really cute. And I have a pink macaron, which is one of my absolute favorites. I eat macarons every chance that I get. Uh, yes, I love them. I also got this little Starbucks Frappuccino. Uh, let's get it on the right side. There you go. How adorable is that? <laughs> it's so detailed. And look at that little chocolate swirl on top. How good does that look? And the last one is a... Did I show you the pink one? I don't think so. A pink macaron as well. So that's the blue one and the pink one. Uh, there we go. Yes. And I got two baggers and two shakes. And um, uh, Seasons Arts and Crafts uh, they have this option where you can choose if you want them with um, without the lobster clasps, uh, which I think is really great because I can put those on myself and they were quite a little bit cheaper actually without the lobster clasps. So that worked out perfectly. I just ordered the charms and uh, assembled, uh, made them into a stitch marker myself. And um, uh, they were also very affordable. I was quite surprised actually with their prices and uh, uh, yeah, they, they are really, really well made and uh, the detailing is just brilliant and I will definitely return to their shop and get some more of their charms. Uh, they just have a lot of gorgeous food themed charms. Uh, some waffles and pizzas and pretzels and all sorts of um, of goodness. So uh, yes, highly recommended Seasons Arts and Crafts on Etsy. Now for my final acquisition, I have some yarn to show you, and more specifically some sock yarn. And um, it is the Schachenmeier Regia. And it is from the Perfect Perfect line, not perfect, they are quite perfect, but it's called Perfect. <laughs> and uh, it's uh, the socks where you get one big skein uh, or ball of yarn that's about, uh, I think it's 100 grams. Um, yes, 100 grams, which equals 420 meters, which is 459 yards. So that's quite a big chunk of, um, of yarn you get with each, uh, each ball. And <sighs> yes, it's, if, you, if you're not familiar with the uh, perfect line from Regia, it is the ones where you have uh, a yellow strand starting off the, 
the ball and then you uh, you cut that off, the yellow one, and you start your sock on the part where, oh, on the collar part of the yarn. So you just cut out the first thread, which is bright yellow, and then you start your sock. And then, halfway through the, the ball of yarn, there is another, another yellow thread, and you wind that off, you cut it off, and you start your sock on the exact same place as you did the first sock so that you'll have two identical pairs which is just brilliant uh, you, it means you don't have to think which is always always welcome and um, it's just great for beginners or just anyone really who wants something a little bit interesting but don't want to think about it too much and um, uh, if you have seen the Arnie and Carlos uh, design line that's um, that's also with uh, a collaboration with Regia and it's the same principle you got that yellow strand you wind it off and you start the pattern no sorry you start the sock but the uh, Arnie and Carlos socks sock yarns, yes, the honey and colour sock yarns have this amazing pattern on them so that when you knit the sock gets this amazing pattern and it's just uh, created from the colouring on the yarn you don't have to do anything, you just have to knit and sock in it and the yarn does everything for you and they are so amazing, uh, they look so good but the ones I got, also from the Perfect series, are just these gorgeous tonal ones. And let's see if there's a photo here. Yeah. So there's, they're just these um, tonal socks go in this denim blue colour. And um, the colourway is 07096. And uh, I just... I can't wait to cast these on. Uh, it seems very sturdy but quite soft as well and um, I don't really like my socks to be too long up on the calf so uh, with this much yarn I could at least, I could get at least two pairs of socks for myself and I might even be able to get a pair for me and a pair for my, my uh, boyfriend because he doesn't really like uh, socks to be long up the leg either, so that that might actually work out. But anyways, this yarn, I pretty much got one in each colour that I could find. So this is the second one, and it's this beautiful peachy pink colour. Um, there it is. It is the colourway 07091. And again, I'm so excited to knit this. I think that it would look just amazing with some sort of um, of uh, lacy pattern. Oh, I keep falling down here. We have a third one. It's this purple one. I think this one might be called Grape. Uh, the balls only have the numbers on them, but you can go to the Regia website and look at the colour names. This one is called 07094, and here we have the final one on the floor. Let me just pop that basket up there again. Um, and it's a green one. Hopefully the colour is coming across on the camera. Uh, these colours really are gorgeous and this colourway is called 07095 and um, again they're just this gorgeous tonal blue green colour and um, yes I'm really excited to work on these uh, I'm not decided on a pattern yet but um, I'm thinking that any sort of lacy pattern would probably look really good with them or, um, yes, I've also been wanting to cast on the monkey socks by Cookie A and I've never made them so I've been wanting to for quite a long time 
and I've actually I'm thinking that uh, the yarn that I showed you in episode one, the Garn Sur yarn, uh, which is called Marie Soup, um, I think that those might turn into some monkey socks. Uh, if you want to know more about this yarn, it is an amazing concept. Head to episode one. I talk quite extensively about it. Uh, but I think that these might be some, some uh, monkey socks uh, with some regia uh, reinforcement in the uh, heels and toes, I'm thinking. So uh, back to the perfect, so, uh, perfect yarn. I haven't decided on a pattern, but I'm sure it's going to be glorious. And <laughs> I can't wait to use, uh, use these. Uh, these yarns. Um, I love the way they look, I love the way they feel, they are quite sturdy. Um, it is a 75% virgin wool and a 25% polyamide and um, yeah I think I think they're going to be just wonderful. It's a superwash uh, treated yarn as well so you can put them in the in the washer without any problems. So that is very good. <laughs> so I think that's probably all of the nitty yarny goodness for this week and uh, I'll just yes, give you a quick little week update in the end here. Um, yeah, so like I talked about last week uh, we were going to a christening for a little baby girl and um, I, um, we ended up getting some collectible uh, uh, fairy tale books um, for the gift which was, um, uh, yeah, it was good, uh, they loved it and uh, the christening was just so sweet and enjoyable and we had such a good time and um, unfortunately we had to go a little bit early because my boyfriend uh, were going to work in the afternoon, late afternoon, so we could stay a while. But um, unfortunately we had to pop out a little bit early. Um, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun and uh, yes, just such a lovely, lovely occasion and um, it was uh, a good day. <laughs> we were really lucky with the weather as well. It was sunny and warm and um, uh, yeah, so enjoyable. Uh, we were outside a lot of the day because of the wonderful weather and yes, just lovely. So that was that was brilliant. Um, and basically, uh, the rest of the week I've spent just studying and studying and studying from early morning to midnight really and um, I had my big exam yesterday it was um, leadership psychology and um, which you know it's it's a quite uh, it's quite an interesting subject and um, I've really enjoyed the class but um, the exam was a bit of a uh, a hassle to read to really and um, I ended up reading um, basically on every single subject except for two and unluckily those were the exact two subjects that I uh, had to write uh, my paper on uh, at the exam. So a little bit unlucky there. But the reason why I didn't really uh, read on those two subjects was because um, I have um, written two bachelor theses. Theses? Theses? These I? The <laughs> Why do you say that? What's the plural of thesis? Thesi? <laughs> that sounds weird. I have written a, a bachelor thesis two times, <laughs> uh, both in uh, in different um, 
both in psychology but in uh, different fields. Um, so one of them was uh, broadly speaking about personality, attribution and bullying and the second one was more about passive leadership and um, um, yes, on uh, the effects um, of, uh, of that. So um, those were the two subjects that I got. I got uh, personality uh, theory in accordance um, to different types of leadership and uh, how different types of uh, personalities influence different sort of leadership um, styles and constructive or destructive leadership and stuff like that. And the other assignment was um, about um, laissez-faire uh, leadership, which is um, just a, a, a very passive sort of let them do whatever they want type of leadership. And that was my second um, second bachelor thesis. So I was sort of lucky uh, with the subjects uh, because obviously uh, I have learned something about about it, but it would be good with a little bit of a um, memory spruce, if you will, in advance, because, you know, when you're at an exam and um, you're supposed to write an academic essay, uh, or in this case, two academic essays, in um, not you don't really have that much time either. So doing that and uh, the stress and the pressure and everything about the situation can sort of sort of um, uh, affect your memory and. The way you think and process information, and the way you pull it, um, put it on the paper, uh, down on the paper, and uh, um, yeah, it's it can be challenging. So I I'd um, I wish I'd f read a little bit about it just to refresh my memory a little bit. But all in all, I think it was all right. Uh, and I guess I was a little bit lucky with the subject, so I'm not going to flunk anyways. So um, that's a, a victory, I guess. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so that's basically been my entire week, just studying. And uh, the exam was yesterday, so um, when I got home in the afternoon, I was so tired, I just... I just wanted to sleep. My eyes were sort of burning just from being open, really. <laughs> so uh, I had a really good afternoon nap, which was just such a, such a luxury and highly enjoyable. And I uh, had the day off today, so I made sure I had no alarms on and I could sleep in. And oh, that was just so desperately needed and felt so wonderful. So this um, this morning I just uh, ate a croissant for uh, for breakfast with some some uh, hot coffee and I knit and catch uh, I spend my time catching up on some of my favorite podcasters and uh, the grocery girls and. Uh, Oh, yeah, it was just such a lovely way to start off the, um, the day, so I feel quite relaxed. I feel a little bit sun right now, uh, so that's quite uh, quite lovely coming off of this insane exam reading, um, what's the word? Well, at least that was, I'm just rambling now. It was, I've been on a bit of a stressful high with the exam and now I'm feeling very relaxed. So <laughs> that's, that's basically it. And um, yeah, it's, um, I forgot to say that, but it's Friday today. It's the 29th of September and um, my uh, boyfriend is uh, 
uh, on a um, night shift today, um, which basically means that tonight's forecast is basically knitting with a good chance of wine. So, <laughs> yeah, that's my evening. It's going to be brilliant and I can't wait. <laughs> And um, yeah, I can just feel myself rambling and starting to lose a little bit of focus and uh, losing the light as well. Uh, so I shall probably wrap this thing up. But thank you so much for watching this week's episode. Please press the subscribe button in the down bar. I will put the show notes in the doobly-doo and uh, I will see you guys soon. Bye!